Mary wept quietly as she waited, aware that her son was being beaten with 39 stripes, but unaware of the unadulterated brutality and hatred which inspired each vicious lash. The first rays of the morning sun were lighting the scene as he emerged. They had dressed him in a scarlet robe and a huge ring of thorns was rammed into his head. His eyes were blinded with the flow of blood and he was obviously finding it difficult to walk. Pilate signalled to the guard who roughly pulled the robe from the body of the saviour. She gasped with horror as she saw the bloody mass of open flesh that her son had been reduced to. He was now naked except for a rag tied around his waist. His face was a mass of bruises and cuts. They had torn out his beard and with it the skin of his face. His torso was a bleeding mass of open wounds. The flagellum, a whip made of braided leather thongs of different lengths in which small iron balls and slivers of sheep's bone were tied at intervals, had cut through his skin and tissue and threw into his skeletal muscles. Long strands of blood oozing flesh were hanging from his pain shocked body. He was weakened by the severe blood loss and barely able to stand. He was also suffering the effects of sleep deprivation, hunger and extreme thirst. She yearned to take his broken body in her arms, bathe his wounds, carry him away from this living hell and tell him how much she loved him, but she could not. She cried out at the top of her voice, I'm here Jesus, I'm here, but her voice was drowned out by the rising chorus of crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. She pushed her way fiercely through the howling mob, inching her way closer to her son, all the time shouting his name. His blood-veiled eyes were scanning the crowd, looking for her, but he could not find her, and her voice was lost in the wind of noise. It was her reckless intention to fight her way to his side, to declare who she was, to die with him if necessary. She wanted to die with him. She wanted to share his pain. He was flesh of her flesh, and if his flesh was suffering, she wanted hers to feel it also. She was within yards of reaching her goal when her arms were seized by two pairs of hands on each side. She swung round. On her right was her friend Mary Magdalene and on her left her sister Salome. Mary, wait, they will kill you. I want them to kill me. I want to die with him. Let me go. I want to go to him. She was sobbing now, her body convulsed with imprudent sorrow. She tried to free her arms from the restraints of her friends. But Mary, he would not want that. It will only add to his suffering if they hurt you. You must be strong for him now. He needs to know that you are safe. We will stay together and whatever happens, we will all be there for him. Mary knew that her sister was right and the last thing she wanted was to make things worse for Jesus. She resigned her body to what now became the supporting arms of the two women and they stood together in silent horror as the scene played out before them. Pilate signalled to be heard and an uneasy silence settled over the crowd. A servant appeared with a bowl of water and a towel the Jews gasped as the Roman adopted a Jewish custom as a final attempt to save an innocent life. He ceremonially washed his hands whilst declaring in a voice lifted up with all the authority he could muster, I am innocent of the blood of this righteous man. See to it yourselves. A priest called back defiantly, His blood be upon us and upon our children crucify him that's right said another we want him crucified then the chorus began again a united rising cacophony of evil music 
rising to a crescendo of deafening hatred. Crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate knew that he had lost his fight. He dried his hands, turned to his centurion and inclined his head towards the prisoner. His voice was subdued, resigned. Crucify him. He turned to leave as the soldiers closed in on the Son of God. As he did so, his eyes settled on a woman in the crowd. Her eyes were desperate, pleading, full of love, and tears were streaming down her weary face. A look of indescribable agony haunted her features, and her hands and arms were open as a woman holds her arms to a falling child. He instinctively knew that it was his mother. For a moment their eyes were linked and sorrow met pity before pity turned away.